Hi guys, last week we were using equivalents to compare fractions. We can compare fraction types that aren't the same by finding equivalents that we can compare directly. We can find an unlimited number of equivalent fractions to any fraction that we're trying to compare. Today we're learning to use equivalents to simplify a fraction. So given any fraction, can we find an equivalent that would be easier to make? So rather than starting with 1 half and finding the equivalent of 3 6, what if we started with the 3 6 and we wanted to find a simpler way to make an equivalent fraction? To begin with, let's get thinking. The pizza guy is preparing his lunch, but he doesn't want a whole pizza. He cuts it into 15 equal slices and takes 6 slices for himself. He takes 6 fifteenths of the pizza for his lunch. And we want to know... Could he cut the pizza in different ways so that he gets the exact same amount? How many different ways can you think? So pause the video for a few minutes, discuss that with a partner, and then share your thoughts with the rest of the class. Let's have a look at what the pizza guy could have done to get exactly the same amount of pizza. He could have started with his fifteenths, but he could have cut each of those fifteenths into two equal parts. He's then made 30 eighths. Now to get the same as those 6 fifteenths, he would need 12 of those 30 eighths. So we can say that 6 fifteenths is the same as 12 30 eighths. He might have started with those 15ths, and this time he might have split them into 3 equal parts. So he's created 40 fifths. He would need 18 of those 40 fifths to be exactly the same as the 6 fifteenths. So we can say that 6 fifteenths is equal to 18 40 fifths. Or alternatively, he might have cut each of those fifteenths into four equal parts. This time he's made 6 eighths. And to have the same as the 6 fifteenths, this time he would need 24 of those 6 eighths. So we can say that 6 fifteenths is the same as 24 6 eighths. We can represent that using fractional notation. The denominator 15 tells us how many parts the whole amount's been cut into, and the numerator tells us how many of those parts we're getting. That's the 6. To find the equivalent fraction, we can think about what we did to each of those parts. When we split those 15s into 6 eighths, each of the parts that we created were 4 times smaller, so we need 4 times more to make up the whole amount. Likewise, the number of parts we're interested in, those six parts that the pizza guy was getting, were cut into smaller parts. Each of those parts were four times smaller, so we need four times more of those parts, which means we get 24 sixtieths. In each of those scenarios, the pizza guy made his life more difficult. He cut them into more parts. He gave himself more work to do. Is there a simpler way to find an equivalent? Could he have made life easier for himself by making fewer cuts? Let's take those 6 fifteenths again and I'm going to reorganise them so that you can see they are the 6 parts to the left hand side. Now rather than cutting up each of those parts to find an equivalent, we could combine those parts. So the pizza guy didn't have to make those cuts that I've highlighted with the dashed lines. Rather than cutting that pizza into fifteenths, he could have cut the pizza into fifths and taken two of those fifths. We found a simpler way to get exactly the same amount of pizza. And again, we can use fractional notation to represent that. Let's start with our six fifteenths. And this time, we're trying to find a simpler way. We can make each of those fifteenths three times larger, which means we get three times fewer number of parts. The whole amount is only made up of five parts now. Likewise, the six parts that we were getting, well, they're getting three times larger. We've not got fifteenths anymore, we've got fifths. And because of that, we need three times fewer parts. We don't need six parts anymore, we only need two of those parts. It's time to get investigating with a partner. Here, I've got two problems that I'd like you to have a go at analysing and solving together. Ron cuts a piece of modelling clay into 24 parts and uses 18 of them. He's saying, I have used 18 24ths of the clay. 18 24ths can be written like this. 
Are there simpler ways that Ron could have done this? How many different ways can you find? And the second problem, 32 out of 48 children in Bart's swimming club can swim the backstroke. He's drawn a bar to represent this as a fraction. We can say 32 48 of the club can swim the backstroke. 32 48 can be written like this. Are there simpler ways that Bart can represent this? How many different ways can you find? So pause the video for 8 to 10 minutes, draw bars and use fractional notation to find simpler ways of creating each of those fractions and then share your ideas with the rest of the class. Let's discuss that first problem. Ron cuts a piece of modelling clay into 24 parts and uses 18 of them. Was there a simpler way to do that? Let's begin with our 18 24ths and let's take a copy of that to see if we can find a simpler way. To begin with, I can identify that he didn't need to make those cuts that I've highlighted there. We can join two of those parts together. So you can see there, rather than making 24ths, Ron could have made 12ths. And he only needs nine of those 12ths to be the same as the 18 24ths. We can show that using our fractional notation again. We've got our 18 24ths. We can make the parts two times larger. So we're going to have two times fewer parts, which means we've got 12. Likewise, the number of parts that he's actually using are getting two times larger, which means he needs two times fewer parts. So he's got nine twelfths. We've found a simpler way. Are there other ways that he could have done this? Let's start with the 18 24ths again. Only this time, those cuts there are unnecessary. I can combine three parts at a time. And when we do that, we've created eighths instead of 24ths. So you can see that 6 eighths is the exact same as 18 24ths. Once again, we can show that in a different way. Here's our 18 24ths. The parts are now three times larger. So we've got three times fewer parts. So we've got eighths. Likewise, the number of parts that Ron would actually use are getting three times larger. So he needs three times fewer parts again. So he's got 6 eighths. Again, we've found a simpler way to do this and we've saved him time. Let's have a look at another alternative. We'll start with our 18 24ths again, only this time those cuts there were unnecessary. Let's combine six parts at a time. Here we've made quarters and you can see he's used three quarters of the clay. Again, we can represent that in a different way. We start with our 18 24ths. Our parts are getting six times larger, so we need six times fewer parts, resulting in our quarters. Likewise, the parts that he uses are getting six times larger, so he needs six times fewer parts, which means he's got three quarters. We found the simplest way that Ron could have done this. Let's have a look at the second problem. 32 out of 48 children in Bart's swimming club can swim the backstroke. Can we find a simpler way to represent this fraction? Let's start with our 32 48s to begin with. We can identify that those splits there are unnecessary, so we can combine two parts at a time, which means that rather than 32 48s, we can create 24s, and 16 of those 24s is exactly the same as 32 48s. Let's represent that in a different way. Here's our 32 48s. We're combining two parts at a time, so the parts are getting two times larger, which means we need two times fewer parts, resulting in our 24ths. The number of parts that we're interested in are getting two times larger as well, which means we need two times fewer parts, resulting in our 16 24ths. We found a simpler way to represent the 32 48ths. Let's have a look at an alternative. Let's start with our 32 48ths again. Let's identify the splits that were unnecessary. You can see that we can combine four parts at a time. So this time, rather than creating 48s, we could have created 12s. And eight of those 12s is the same as those 32 48s. We can represent that another way. There's our 32 48s. We're combining four parts at a time, so the parts are getting four times larger. 
which means we need four times fewer parts. So we've got 12 parts all together this time. Likewise, the number of parts that we're interested in are getting four times larger. So we need four times fewer parts, which results in our eight twelfths. We found another simpler way to represent that 32 48ths. And again, let's start with our 32 48ths. We can combine eight parts at a time, which means those splits were unnecessary, and we could have split that whole bar into six parts. We've created sixths, and four of those sixths is exactly the same as the 32 48ths. Let's represent that another way. Here's our 32 48ths. Each of the parts are eight times larger this time, which means we need eight times fewer parts, resulting in our sixths. And the parts that we're interested in are getting eight times larger as well, which means we need eight times fewer parts, resulting in our four sixths. Again, we've found a simpler way. And lastly, let's start with our 32 48ths. Let's identify the unnecessary splits. We can combine 16 parts at a time, which means we only needed to cut that bar into three equal parts to make thirds. And those 32 48ths are the same as two of those thirds. There's a 32 48ths. Each of the parts are 16 times larger, which means we need 16 times fewer parts creating our thirds. The parts that we're interested in are getting 16 times larger also, which means we need 16 times fewer parts, resulting in our two thirds. We found the simplest way that Bart can represent 32 48ths. For each of these solutions, we identified a number that we could divide both the numerator and denominator by. 32 and 48 could both be divided by 2, 4, 8 and 16. So we could use these to simplify the fraction. We can say that 2, 4, 8 and 16 are factors of both 32 and 48. When a number is a factor of two other numbers, we can say that it's a common factor of both. 16 was the highest of these factors, so we can say that it's the highest common factor. And we can use this to find the simplest equivalent fraction. It's time to discuss our success criteria. How did we achieve success? What are the steps that we can go through in order to simplify a fraction? So pause the video for a few minutes, discuss that with a partner, and then share your thoughts with the rest of the class. When we want to create a simplified fraction, we can begin by creating the fraction itself. So here we're interested in 18 24ths. We can represent that using the bar or as you can see using fractional notation on the right hand side. Once we've done that, we can identify any unnecessary splits and our factors help us do that. We identified that we could combine six parts at a time and now we can join those parts. Rather than having 24ths, we can see that we could have created quarters. So we can identify the parts that make up the whole Rather than needing to cut that hole into 24 parts and having 24 fourths, we can cut it into four parts to have quarters. And we can show that using a fractional notation. Because we're combining six parts at a time, each of the parts are getting six times larger, so we need six times fewer parts. Finally, we can identify the parts that we're actually interested in. We started with 18 parts. Each of those parts were getting six times larger, so we needed six times fewer parts, which means we only needed three of those quarters to be exactly the same as 18 24ths. It's time to try that out. Can you apply that success criteria in order to analyse and solve the following problems? For the first problem, the following bar shows how many days Chewbacca does a morning workout. He works out 36 days out of 54. In the second problem, the following bar shows Hermione's score in a class test on potions. She scores 48 out of 60. And in the third problem, the Hulk tiles his kitchen floor with the following pattern. 42 out of 72 tiles are green. Now for each of those problems, I want you to represent each fraction in a simpler way using bar models and fractional notation. If you're going for the mild challenge this time, I want you to find one simplified fraction. If you want to go for the spicy challenge, 
I want you to find two to three simplified fractions. And if you want to go for the extra hot challenge, can you find all simplified fraction, including the fraction in its simplest form? So draw bars and use fractional notation in order to solve each of those problems. If you manage those in the time, there's an additional challenge for you. How many fractions can you find that can be simplified four or more times? So can you make up a fraction that has at least four simpler equivalent fractions? Pause the video for 10 minutes or so and have a go at those. It's time to reflect in today's learning. So with a partner or as a class, I'd like you to reflect on the following questions. What have you learned today? What did you find easy or difficult? Did you get stuck? What helped you when something got tricky? What do you need more help with? What is really making you think? And what are your next steps? The last thing I'm going to ask you to do today is can you apply what you've learned? So as a class, I'd like you to discuss, analyze, and solve the following problem. Homer, Rocket, and Leah are practicing penalty kicks. Homer scores 50 out of 75 of his penalties. Rocket scores 40 out of 50 of his penalties. And Leah scores 27 out of 36 of her penalties. Who has the highest success rate? Thanks for joining me again today. I hope you enjoyed that. As ever, if you've got any questions or you'd like to share your solutions with me, you can contact me at scott.morrow at southairshire.gov.uk and you can follow me on Twitter at scottmorrowessay. Next week, we're going to be continuing with fractions and with exploring equivalents. However, next week, the focus will be on decimal equivalents. I hope you can join me then.